Yeah, welcome back to the Prophecy Report. Uh, Peter the Roman uh, at it again, Mr. Gallops. Uh, what do you think about that? What's going on in your head with respect to uh, Pope Francis? Well, Mike, uh, you know, it just jumped off of the headlines at me this week when I, when I read an article over at Breitbart where the Pope, again, directly contradicts the Word of God this week. Really? Uh, and the title of the article is there is no big bang without God, says Pope Francis. And the article goes on to tell us that basically he has endorsed evolution as being compatible with the biblical creation. So Mike Shoesmith, what do you say to that? What do I say to that? I say, uh, I say the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> in, fact, uh, in fact, didn't the Lord actually rebuke the Pope uh, personally uh, with his own words? I mean, didn't, I mean, well, let's go right to it here. Matthew 19, 4 says, and he answered and said to them. And he may as well have answered and, and he may as well put the Pope, Pope Francis in there too. And he answered and said to the Pope, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Now, you and I both know, uh, Brandon, that uh, Jesus is actually uh, quoting Genesis 1 verse 27, where it says, so God made man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. But, uh, you know, as you know, Brandon, uh, the theory of deep time evolution is, the, is essentially the theory that fish became men, right? I mean, if, if, uh, if the evolutionists out there don't realize that the evolution theory teaches that fish turned into men, they don't understand their own theory because fish are in the human uh, lineage as per the theory of evolution. Now, if we back that uh, Bible verse up, one to verse 26 check this out uh, it says and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish so so uh, clearly uh, the Bible uh, uh, rebukes the Pope in so much as it says that uh, men did not come from fish men are to have dominion over the fish so um, uh, the Pope Francis stands stands uh, stands uh, solidly rebuked by Jesus himself Mike, I don't think that it gets any clearer than that, brother, but let's go a step further. You know, since the, the, the Pope, since Pope Francis has, has been in office, um, if that's the right word, right. We, have, we have just seen blasphemy after blasphemy after, after blasphemy. And, and these are just a few that come to my head here, Mike. Um, we have seen the Pope assure atheists that they don't have to believe in God to go to heaven. We have seen the Pope get on his knees and wash the feet of some little Muslim girls in an effort to try and tell us that we are all worshiping the same God. Right. Uh, we, we have seen the Pope endorse homosexuality. Uh, we have seen the, uh, him endorse homosexual marriage. Just last week, the statement from the Pope was that God can accept change. And the yeah. context of that was that the church now needs to be changing and accepting things like homosexuality and, and being more accepting to divorce and other things that we see that are running rampant in our culture these days. So my question is, Mike, with all of these blasphemies, obvious blasphemies to you and I, is there something deeper at work here with Pope Francis? Well, indeed, uh, Brandon, uh, you bring up some great points there. It really does look like uh, the uh, now last on the last show we uh, the last show we discussed uh, whether or not uh, uh, Barack Hussein Obama could be the uh, Islamic Antichrist. Uh, hypothetically, you know, uh, we're not making any this or that statements, but uh, you know, considering the times that we live in, uh, Brandon, uh, it would seem uh, logical and reasonable to expect that since. Uh, you know, as we say, the end time is now. If the end time really is now, if we are in the last of the last days, it would make sense that the Antichrist, uh, the chief among many Antichrists, would be in the world today. Uh, so we were uh, sort of uh, playing around with the idea that does, does Barack Obama fit the, uh, the uh, specifications outlined in the Bible for this end time antichrist man of sin son of perdition uh, lawless person uh, does uh, barack obama fit the criteria and we've been documenting over the past few years that barack obama is in fact a syncretist and syncretism is the conflation of all of the worldviews uh, in the world into one view into one understanding and embracing that as one common view and that is syncretism and uh, it does seem that uh, barack obama is walking in parallel lockstep 
with uh, the Jesuit Pope in the Vatican. What are your thoughts on that? You know, Mike, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the Pope has done his best to, to make it uh, his mission, it seems, to, to reach out to all of the, quote, religions of the world. Right. And to try to assure everyone, I don't know that he said the words, but he has definitely insinuated, like many others, that we're all worshiping the same God. Right. And that it's okay that we're all, you know, we're all going to heaven, it doesn't matter. Um, and there are so many anomalies that go along with this Pope. And listen, since the first day that he has been officially the Pope, those have been the headlines of how different he is, of how he has done things and done things in ways and in context that no other Pope has done. Um, Mike, one of those anomalies you just alluded to in the fact that he's a Jesuit. Right. He's the first Jesuit Pope in the history of the Catholic Church. Now, in my eyes, that could, that could be huge. Um, do you have any insights on, on that? Well, I mean, doesn't the Jesuit uh, order, does, don't they teach uh, They teach a conflation of, of uh, worldviews into one? Don't they have it as an end goal to bring all the world's religions together into one uh, common uh, place, essentially? Well, they, they certainly do. And there are, there's a very deep and dark side to the Jesuit side uh, of the Catholic Church. Um, for a period of time in the history of the Catholic Church, Mike, the Jesuits were actually banned. Mm -hmm. They were not allowed to practice within the confines of the Catholic Church. Uh, they, uh, for centuries, uh, this is a, is a known fact, that they have elected their own pope at different times and have called him the Black Pope, which is very interesting. You alluded to the Peter the Roman fact, uh, right. the, the last uh, pope, but there was a lot of things that went along um, with that scenario, alluding to a, quote, Black Pope. Uh, and there's just there's a very deep and dark side to the to the Jesuit sect of the Catholic Church, uh, and with and with Pope Francis here being the first Jesuit, uh, and then all of these other anomalies, the the ways that he has stepped outside of the norm, um, and, and the ways that popes act and the things that they say, uh, like like I say, Mike, there's just I just believe that there may be something a little deeper here. Uh, than just a need to try and reach out to, uh, to, to all the religions of the world, if you will. Right. I mean, we have seen, and we can through, we've started the show with uh, the theory of evolution, but, you know, evolution is a word, and it means change over time, right? And uh, we have seen the evolution of Barack Obama on homosexuality. You know, he has, uh, he came out in 2008 and endorsed DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, which is law of the right. land. And now he has since made an about face. And, and uh, you know, many articles have said, uh, made the bold declaration that his uh, stance on same-sex marriage has evolved. And now he's right. obviously in full favor of, uh, of, of uh, homosexual lifestyle and, and uh, same-sex marriage, and his views on that have changed. And we've seen Barack Obama first off, first off claim to be a Christian, uh, you know, because I think that's a prerequisite to get elected as president in this country is to claim at least to be a Christian, right? Right. And then, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, claiming to be a Muslim to uh, George Stephanopoulos during an interview, which shocked the world, and he had to be corrected by Stephanopoulos. Uh, you can imagine, you know, there is no context in which I would ever make the mistake and claim to be a Muslim. Uh, but uh, I guess Barack Obama forgot what day it was, and uh, you know that he was really letting his syncretism show there. Uh, we, you know, he lifted up his skirt, and boom, there it was. You know, a full blown syncretism. He credited Gandhi with uh, being elected as president. Uh, uh, and he was endorsed by the Buddhist Association for President. I mean, the man embraces all the all the. And there are people within the White House who have come out and said, "Look, the guy's an atheist." And guess what? Here we have uh, here we have the the Jesuit uh, Peter the Roman in, in the Vatican, uh, almost virtually walking lockstep hand in hand. You know, he's made a, an obvious evolution on uh, on uh, same sex lifestyle. Uh, he, he has uh, he has allowed uh, the the Muslims in within the Vatican walls to pray, uh, and uh, and uh, he uh, has uh, come out and said, "Look, uh, the atheists, uh, hey, you know, they can get into heaven just like anybody else, just by being good people." And and, uh, you know, the evolution has happened uh, almost in lockstep. Is there ever a time, uh, I don't know, I suppose there, there, there could come a time, an event perhaps, which might cause, you know, a, an, a, a, um, a, a, a sort of teamwork 
uh, to take place here where they out, they out come together and say, hey, look, you know, we have similar beliefs. Let's come together and try and bring about world peace. What are your thoughts on that? I think that that is a distinct possibility, Mike. I think that, um, that, that now more than at any time in history that we're seeing the table being set for that, and you kind of alluded to this earlier. You know, you said that if 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 we if we're going to proclaim that we believe like you and I do that the end time is now, then listen. Jesus told us that we must be aware of the times that we live in. We must be looking for these figures and for these people, this antichrist figure and this uh, this 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 uh, eventual false prophet figure that will team up with the antichrist. So so yes, we have to look. At, at, at people that are in positions of power and of leadership, in positions of world power and world leadership. And, and we have to compare them to these things that the Bible clearly tells us will happen and will be characteristics of those people. And uh, again, we are not proclaiming that the Pope is the false prophet, uh, and we are not proclaiming that Barack Obama is the Antichrist, but what we are doing is saying, wow, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here, and there's two paths that seem to be converging that could absolutely be leading to these two figures. And here, here's another thought that just came to me, Brandon. Uh, get your thoughts on this, but uh, here we have uh, the, the droner-in-chief uh, uh, sending drones over to the Middle East to take care of business over there, and in fact... Uh, uh, you know, that is his weapon of choice. Uh, Noam Chomsky called him uh, the biggest terrorist who has ever lived because of his drone campaigns, you know, killing dozens of people for every terrorist that he gets uh, with these drones. Uh, and uh, now we, and uh, recently, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, the Pope came out and said, hey, look, you know, it's time to deal harshly with these, uh, with these uh, terrorists, ISIS, and uh, he's full, fully in favor of killing them. I mean, he has, he has put his, uh, his uh, stamp of approval on what Barack Obama is doing in the Middle East. Yes, yeah, now that is, that, that's an excellent point. And just one more, one more thing, like I say, that just puts their two paths on a collision course, if you will. Wow. Uh, and there certainly, uh, there certainly seems to be a lot of similar uh, interest, a lot of similar talking points, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of similar thinking between the current president of the United States and the current pope. There's no doubt about that. Hey, Brandon, close this out with a with a positive word for the people here. We've given them a lot to chew on here. I'm sure we'll hear a lot of comments from people in the, in the comment sections and in my personal email inbox. <laughs> you should be thankful you haven't given anybody your uh, personal email inbox. <laughs> uh, wrap it up for us. Give people a positive uh, a note here. Let's end this on a positive note for people. Absolutely. First of all, Mike, let's just be very clear in closing again. We are not proclaiming either one of these two men to be either one of these biblical figures. But we are charged to look at these things. Uh, and my positive word would be this, that I find these times, because I do believe we're living in the end, I find these times to be exciting. And the reason, Mike, that I can proclaim to find these times exciting is because I am 100% confident of my salvation in Jesus yeah. Christ. And so that is my positive word to anyone listening. If you are not confident of your salvation in Jesus Christ, get a hold of us, T.P. Simmons, uh, and we can help you with that or find someone that can give you some good, solid spiritual counsel. And that's a great way to end it. I'll give you the last word. Brandon Big B Gallops, my name is Mike Shoesmith. You've been listening to the Prophecy Report. We'll talk to you next time.